I'm Mitch Marks, electrification specialist with HBK. Later, I'm going to be joined by my colleague, Ed Green. We're going to be speaking about noise and vibration in electric powertrain. So as most of us know, the electric powertrain consists of an inverter, a motor, and a gearbox. And each one of these components has things that contribute to noise and vibration. But first, I think we need to look at their basic functionality. The inverter creates a high frequency voltage by turning a switch on and off very quickly. This is in the tens of kilohertz. This goes into the motor where it's filtered into a high frequency current and magnetics. Again, this is creating the torque and speed in the motor. And this high frequency voltage becomes a, a current with some harmonic content that then becomes a mechanical output you know, of torque or speed that has torque ripple, that has torsional resonances. And these currents also create radial forces in the machine. All of these components can contribute to noise and vibration, which results in an experience issue, durability issue, and a fatigue issue. Now off to Ed. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, my name is Ed Green, and I'm going to get a little bit more into the noise and vibration details. So Mitch kind of outlined our battery inverter motor gear setup here. Uh, batteries don't make noise thankfully, but batteries in a modern electric vehicle almost always have uh, a pump or a fan in them. So those are all part of the NVH solution that has to be dealt with too, and part of, part of uh, the noise and vibration engineer's expertise. The inverter. So what we would like the inverter to do is to produce a perfect sine wave. That would produce the least amount of noise and the least amount of torque ripple It would pro by providing the smoothest possible input. What really happens, as Mitch indicated up here, is that the inverter wants to turn on and turn off. The reason it does this is because it's a component made of uh, solid state electronics. Solid state electronics want to be either turned on or turned off. Otherwise, they are, they're in an intermediate state where they produce much more heat. So what the inverter does is it wants to create the sine wave, but the way it does it is it, it comes on um, and then at the switching frequency, let's say the switching frequency is 10,000 hertz. 10, 000, in a 10,000th of a second, it, it comes along and it goes, what do I do now? Oh, I'm gonna turn on and produce a little bit of, a little bit of uh, current. And then I turn off, then I come on, I produce a little bit more current. And then as I get into and as I get into the meat of my volt, voltage, I produce current more and more and more, more often. And then as I get farther out here, I produce current less and less often. There's more spaces between those. So this is a, called a pulse width modulated system. And uh, the reason this is undesirable is because it's switching on and off 10,000 times a second. So it's actually producing noise at 10 at 10,000 hertz. And it's also producing noise at sidebands of that. So it's got a noise peak at 10,000 hertz and then it has um, and then it has different harmonic peaks that go along with that that uh, produce high frequency noise. There's another control scheme that's called uh, it's called multi-step. And in a multi-step system what we do is it the inverter turns on the current, then it stays steady, then the inverter turns on a maybe at a higher level, and then goes down to a lower level and produces kind of a pseudo sine wave that's all squared off. Well, the issue with the multi-step is that now we have this squared off sine wave and it has many low frequency harmonics. So it's gonna produce higher levels of torque ripple and higher levels of noise. Let's talk about the motor. So the motor produces noise in two different ways. One that we just talked about earlier, torque ripple. Torque rip. So we're, we're producing uh, fluctuations in torque that comes from the motor. That also produces fluctuations in force that act on the, the, the motor mounts. And also they go through the suspension and they create noise and vibration in the, in the vehicle. 
the motor also produce radiated noise. The way that it does this is that the outside of the motor, the part that we call the stator, is like a cylinder. It's like a metal cylinder. It's kind of like a bell. Like imagine the stator deforms into an oval. It's deflecting like this back and forth, back and forth. This would be the first mode of deflection of the, of the stator. And then imagine the next highest mode is like a triangle shape. So there's a mode that looks like a triangle, and then it deflects into this other triangle and back and forth, and, it, and on and on. There's one that looks like a square, then there's one that looks like, <coughs> that looks like a five-sided shape, one that looks like a... These are the different modes. So this is how the stator acts as a bell. It's a metal cylinder that has a bunch of different modes, and they get excited by, uh, by, the, by the torque ripple. They get excited by the different forces. So the inside of the, of the motor is called the rotor. And the rotor might have magnets on it, um, something like that. And then around the outside, I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit. We have the stator, and the stator has a bunch of coils in it. What the stator wants to do with its being energized and having the, the current pass through it is it wants to produce torque onto the rotor. And it does do that. Obviously, if the motor goes around, then the, the stator is producing torque on the rotor. But in doing that, it's also producing very large forces. Um, you know, keep in mind that, unlike the way I've drawn it, the rotor and the stator are very close to each other, very, very close to each other. So there are very large forces that act on the rotor in the radial direction. And there are equal and opposite forces that act on the stator in the radial direction. So what we have is we have a cylinder that's being acted on by forces in different areas. That is how these modes get excited. And the excitation of those modes by the different, by the different control strategies is how the noise, how the the motor makes radiated noise. Finally, our final step here, and I won't say a tremendous about, amount about this, but almost all electric motors turn too fast for normal driving, and they have some type of final gear drive, usually, uh, usually a planetary gear set. Now, what we would like in a gear set is we would like to have two perfect circles that roll against each other with the speed being changed according to their different radius. What we really get is a meshing of teeth where they um, come together. And if one, of the, if one of the gears is turning at a uniform speed, because of the meshing, the other gear is gonna slightly speed up and slow down every time there's a meshing together. That error also produces something that's like torque ripple, which produces, uh, which produces the gear noise. So as you can see, in considering noise and vibration of an electric motor, there's a lot of different multi-physics that needs to be brought into this. There's, there's the electronics part of it, and the, the, you know, the, the stator is a bell, and uh, the gear part of this. So there's a lot of different skills that are required. HBK possesses a lot of these skills among individuals and among different groups. Thank you, Ed, for that really detailed description of uh, inverter and motor noise. You're welcome. It's, uh, it's very obvious that the electric powertrain has a really multi-physics um, source for noise and vibration. We have the inverter and its high frequencies, the motor and its low frequencies. These are caused by electrical signals and creating things like uh, mechanical deflection that creates this noise and vibration. Fortunately, HBK has some really great tools and expertise that allow us to help engineers characterize and solve these noise and vibration issues. One of the tools we have is our eDrive power analyzer. Now the eDrive system is special. It allows you to measure those electrical signals at the really high sample rate, and also the mechanical signals like torque, torque ripple, acceleration, microphones. So it's a true electric, and mechanical acquisition system, allowing you to understand that multi-physics 
um, NVH phenomena. The E-Drive system also allows you to very accurately measure both the amplitude and frequency of torque ripple. This is because we make the torque sensors and we understand them at an extreme detail so that we can get the full accuracy and bandwidth so that you can understand how your electrics affect your torque and how your torque might correlate to your radial forces. Lastly, we record data at a high enough sample rate so that you can understand how all of these phenomena interact. You can catch that high switching frequency and also that, that acoustic noise. Um, so with that, Ed is gonna tell us a little bit about our engineering services. Cool, thank you, Mitch. Another great thing about eDrive is you can take the output from eDrive and you can bring it into our, our NVH software that's called BK Connect. BK Connect is a fully featured NVH software that does color maps, it does sound quality, it, it applies different filters, it does playback, it's everything that a noise and vibration engineer would need. And it takes um, data files from eDrive in order to, to do that, or it can do it standalone. Um, engineering services can provide the following. We have expertise with pumps, we have expertise with fans, we have expertise in gear wine. We'll just make that GW. And we also have something called SPC, which is Source Path Contribution, which is a very sophisticated software that we offer. And what it does is that it's very measurement intensive. We can figure out what the strength is of the motor vibration. We can measure, we can figure out what the strength is of the of the motor noise radiation, we can figure out the strength of, of um, through all the different paths, through the motor mounts, through the suspension, through the through the air in the car, in order to quantify and play back uh, the the, uh, the in order to quantify the noise and vibration. So just think of it as the tool that that breaks everything down and really. Uh, and really allows us to analyze things in great detail. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Um, HBK, with our acquisition products and our experts like Ed, who can really come in, help you understand your system, understand that multi-physics system. With these tools, HBK can allow you to bring a better product to market more quickly. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.